guys, my name is Adam and welcome to Driven Nashville. And today we are gonna be talking about one of my all time favorite brands and that is Ducati. We have an 1199 Panigale R that I've recently brought to the channel. I absolutely think this is the hottest motorcycle Ducati has ever made. And even if you're not a rider, I think this video hopefully will give you a good idea of not only why I love Ducatis, a little bit about my history with Ducatis, but also give you a really good idea of kind of what they're like to ride. If you want a 20 minute vacation, jump on one of these things i'm telling you there are not many things that are going to deliver more thrills more fun than one of these and we're also going to talk a little bit about the 1200s which is behind me uh, so that's also another uh, ducati that i currently have in the stable and uh, we'll talk a little bit about how i got that one please like and subscribe i know this is a little different one than the usual car videos i do but i really think you guys will like it i totally understand that riding overall is on the decline most millennials and frankly half of my friends are too scared to ride you know they're always thinking of the consequences I don't personally live my life in fear. I had a really bad motorcycle accident in 2017 and I still consciously decided to ride. However, I ride safe. I make sure that I can always see. I ride with usually leathers. Today, I'm gonna to go out in a full uh, Dianese race suit just in case. So just so you know, there you can ride. It is still dangerous, but you can control the risk just like anything in life. I hope you guys enjoy the video. Don't live life in fear. Go, if you can afford one, go get one of these. I think they're gonna be hugely collectible one day. Let's get on into the video. All right, let's talk a little bit about the 1199 and first of all, why I love it. So the 1199 that differentiates the 1199S from the R, as you can see here, this has an exposed aluminum gas tank. Really, really sexy. It also has extra styling added. It has a number of other performance upgrades this particular motorcycle has the Terminani exhaust, which is something that they installed when they were shipped over here since they didn't meet, I think, uh, standards for noise regulation. And it does have a number of internal guts. This is also an upgrade. I will say this is not how the bike came. So this is actually the clutch cover and you can see the thing spinning. It's very, very cool. Uh, I'll, when I turn it on, I'll go ahead and show you that, of course. And then the other thing that makes it is just the internals. This has, uh, you know, titanium connecting rods. You know, it has a single-sided swing arm. Now that was something that came with all 1199s, but they basically put every little piece they could, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber, carbon fiber. So essentially what makes the 1199R being the R, different than the S, is the fact that it's got the titanium connecting rods, the exposed aluminum, the extra body paint, and everything they did was all about lightening the motorcycle. This motorcycle weighs 364 pounds. Let me say that again, 364 pounds, and that is it. Think about it. This has 195 horsepower, and it weighs 364 pounds. So you wanna talk about flying this is about as good as it gets. And I don't know about you all, but I think this personally is the hottest motorcycle they ever designed. I mean, just look at it. And you know, like everything, the devil's in the details. Notice here, these right here are intakes. And notice here, these right here, just like the new bikes they have, they've carried this on into the 1299, right? Check it out. Look at that. That's where the lights come on. So just styling wise, here's your adjustable Olin suspension. Now the 1199S and R both have Olins. Uh, that's part of the upgrade package. The other thing that's not stock about this, this does have different grips. These are not stock grips and different ends. But beyond that, this bike, other than the clutch cover and the Terminani exhaust is all factory ready to rock. Okay, let's go ahead and do a startup sequence. So it's very simple. You turn the key to the on position. You can see the TFT display comes on. This only has 2,300 miles. When you want to fire the bike up, you lift this up and you hold this down till it starts. As 
you can hear, it's a very loud motorcycle, although I will say it's not actually as loud as the Monster 1200S. So I'll just take a minute to go over this video, just since I pulled it out, uh, to go over it on this video. So this essentially has a 1200cc motor in it, puts out about, I believe, 130, 140 horsepower. So it's not nearly as fast as, of course, this. It's also a lot heavier. Now this is considered more of a naked bike, and the distinction of a naked bike is you see here all of it is exposed, so it doesn't have fairings. Now one of the cool things I will say real quick about the Panigale is there is no frame in the bike. The actual frame is mounted, everything is mounted to the L-twin. So the L-twin goes like this and goes like that, right? So all of the fairing bits, all of the actual things that basically support the rider from the seat to all the front forks are all mounted to the engine. Uh, that allows them to save weight. It's really cool when you actually start looking through this thing, how they designed it. Um, it's fantastic design. They've carried it on all the way through even the new Panigale. Now with the naked bike, you can see here, this does have the trellis frame. So everything as far as is connected to the frame, it adds a little bit of weight, but it also makes it a little more comfortable to ride. You'll also see here you have more of an upright seating position. It's still pretty darn aggressive. You know, when you're, when you're on it, you are leaning forward, uh, whereas the Ducati, you're pretty much like that, right? Um, so the Ducati is uh, definitely very, very uncomfortable to ride as far as that one. The seat's uh, very, very harsh. This has some, uh, some padding to it. But let's go ahead and turn this one on and I'll show you how it, how it fires So the up. startup sequence is literally exactly the same. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on, come over here, and then fire it up. And there you go. that's going to ever come through on the microphone just how good these bikes sound but you know I wanted to talk just a little bit about you know why I love Ducati I think that they are very very desirable very collectible they are the Ferrari of motorcycles this was a $35,000 motorcycle if you wanted to buy this brand new $35,000. If you wanted to buy this thing brand new, it's going to run you, I believe, $16,000, $17,000. That's before you pay tax, before you pay transportation fees, any of the other little things a dealer's going to try to sell you on, right? The fact that these depreciate so much is what makes them such a fantastic buy. These motorcycles right here are going anywhere between 17,000 and 20,000. So you're talking about less than half the price of one brand new. And that's a lot of motorcycle, that's a lot of sexiness for a motorcycle, you know, for, let's be honest. I mean, that right there is a piece of art. A lot of guys put them in their uh, man caves, like I do. When you come over and play poker, this is the bike you're gonna see there as with this okay so i'm just saying it's like you can buy these as art as much as you can buy them for utility for the pleasure of riding them you know i never really understood why somebody would want to put you know quarter million or 50 grand or something in there you know into a piece of art that sits on your wall when you can have something like this which i think is uh, 3d art right so i think when we're moving into a world where it's all internal combustion engines are getting hated on everything's moving to electric the fact that you have one of these in the uh, stable, I don't know about you, but the fact that they only made about 400 of these and they got shipped to the United States, I would assume 20% of those have been wrecked. So you're talking about maybe 300, 330, three, somewhere in there, bikes that are actually in existence in the United States. That's pretty darn exclusive. And I know I love them. I would pay money for them in the future. So I'm, I'm making a bet that that is going to become collectible and very desirable. Now, because I bought it to own myself, this was always a, you know, let's call this a grail, no different than a grail watch. This was a grail motorcycle. I don't particularly think that I'm going to sell it. Um, hopefully I'll be able to hold on to it forever, but I know if I had to sell it, I'm not going to lose my, you know what? And there's always a confidence feeling, you know, when you purchase something and you know that it doesn't lose money. That's the reason why Rolex and a lot of these other brands right now are just crushing it because they know if you buy one of their watches, you walk out and you actually make money. All right, guys, I think I've rambled on enough. So let's go ahead and take this thing out on the road so I can show you how it rides, how, little, how it performs, 
and hopefully we can find something cool and you can actually understand me with all the wind because again you do sit up here so you let you literally are flying because that's uh, essentially where your helmet <laughs> uh, low helmet is so you actually your view of the motorcycle is about right there so you yeah, you see this but that's about it it literally is the closest thing to flying you know, real quick, just for safety, I wanted to show you guys the race suit that I have owned for now some time. This is about as good as it gets uh, as far as protection goes. You get full armor here, here, in the back as well. You also get armor on the legs. And uh, of course, these are your scrape pads. Now, when I'm riding on the street, uh, and I highly encourage people to forget about the concept of chicken strips. That is ridiculous. You're not gonna be able to get that low on the street. Uh, if you wanna do that, you wanna scrape and, and, and really grind um, these pads down, you need to go to the track, guys, okay? You don't wanna endanger anybody else's life except your own. But the, this is a full wasting suit. These are not cheap. Uh, I actually think this will be really collectible one day just because, you know, good luck trying to get one of these things uh, after they, Probably stop allowing people to have cows for carbon reasons. Who the hell knows? No clue how difficult it is to shoot this particular video with the race suit on, more or less. But. All right, guys, well, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I'm so sorry that the audio, I mean, it's almost impossible to get a good footage riding this motorcycle because you're just going so fast. There's so much wind and, mo and uh, vibration. So I've actually uh, have decided I'm gonna invest in another camera um, for an upcoming trip to Portland, Oregon that I'm gonna do on a motorcycle. So hopefully that content turns out even better. Um, but overall, I love this bike. I think they're gonna be very collectible. Um, the one negative of the 1199R that I've heard people say is that it's not fast enough in the sense that it doesn't have as much mid-end and uh, kind of like when you initially between, I don't know, four and 6,000 RPMs, it's not quite as, as you know, torquey or not quite as get up and go. I would actually say for the street, that's preferred because you can have some fun ringing it out a little bit before you're doing Mach 1. For the track though, uh, I probably wouldn't buy this bike, honestly. Um, I think it's a great bike for the track. It's designed for the track, I'm sure, but there are just better inline four cylinder motors that BMW and other manufacturers, Ninja, Yamaha, they all make easier bikes to ride fast. But none of them are gonna give you the same feeling uh, that this bike does. The way it looks, the way it sounds, 
It's just, it's a little mini vacation every time I get on it. Ultimately, that is kind of what you want out of one of these things, right? Uh, you want one that just takes your mind off of things, keeps you in the moment, and something you can enjoy. So uh, that's why I buy Ducatis. This will be, this is, I think, my fifth one. Uh, so I'll take you through the bikes here real quick. I started with a Ducati ST4, which I'll show here. And then I uh, went on to a 1098S, which I'll show here. And then I went on to a very cool 899 Panigale. So this bike came out after the 899 was released. So it was the 899 and the 1199. And then after that, I got the 1200S Monster. And then thereafter, I've now gotten the 1199R. So again, thank you for watching. Really appreciate it. I look out for your comments. Um, hopefully you guys have a chance to enjoy one of these bikes. I think if you are a rider and you, you, can, know, you can control the safety factor and whatnot, you're not gonna have a better time. It's not comfortable, I will say that. You're gonna have some neck issues, possibly some wrist issues, but at least go out there. I guarantee you when you get done with it, you're not gonna be like, oh, that was so painful. No, you're just gonna be like, oh my God, that was the craziest time ever. Wow, and you're just gonna be completely in the moment and you're gonna be, whatever was bothering you, I promise you is gone and uh, it'll be right back to the moment as Eckhart Tolle would say, right? The power of now. This will put you in the power of now every time you fire it up. So, hope you guys enjoyed the content. Please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. I love this motorcycle, I love talking about it and I'll catch you on the next one.